This is a $10 billion telescope, and it floats around in deep space, taking images of the craziest space objects out there. In this video, we'll compare the images that it can take with the images from a $2 billion telescope, a $150 million telescope on the top of a mountain, a telescope on an enormous balloon that cost $5 million, all the way down to how space looks using just your phone, or even this telescope I made myself for less than a dollar. Let's start with even less than a dollar. What about a zero dollar telescope? Well, most of us are carrying around working telescopes everywhere we go. Our eyes are literally our own windows to the visible universe. So let's start there. I'm out here in the dark and hopefully you can see what I can see. A few stars, a whole lot of darkness and not a lot else. I will let you in to three sneaky free upgrades you can do for your eyes though. One, two, and number three is to just wait. Just like a long exposure photo on a camera, the longer you wait, the more you can see. As you stare at the sky for longer and longer, your eyes collect more and more light, and you can see more and more stars. Let's be honest though, I'm glad this is just the starting point because I'm not blown away yet. Next up, we have this telescope I made for a dollar or less out of paper. To be honest though, it feels pretty similar to just using your hand, so I'd say save your dollar and just use your hands instead. All right, let's forget this being outside business and let's head back to the ship and kick things up a notch. Also, you might be able to tell by my accent, but I'm actually not American, so I don't use these dollars we're talking about in this video. It's just a better understood currency than the strange British money we actually use here. So it's dollars for this video. Before we go to the things that look like a typical telescope here on Earth and even the ones in space, I actually want to show you just how accessible space can be with just your phone. I don't really know how to price this one. It's probably between a few hundred and a thousand dollars or so if you were to buy the phone outright. But most of us have one already, so we wouldn't be buying it to be our telescope. So maybe this one is free as well? I don't really know. You can decide on this one. Admittedly, I went somewhere dark on the edge of England to take this photo, but I think it's a pretty cool one of the Milky Way disc that I took with nothing but my phone. I literally just lay it down on the top of a car and took a 30 second exposure. Most phones can do this nowadays, it's normally under pro mode or pro photo, but the internet will tell you exactly how to do a long exposure photo for your specific phone. The Milky Way is the galaxy we live in. It's a collection of billions of stars just like our sun, and many planets out there too. And I took this cool photo of deep space using something I carry around with me every day. That is pretty cool. Now let's go see a proper telescope and find out how much better that actually is. And after that, we'll compare some of the biggest telescopes on and off the planet. This telescope here is owned by my friend Tian Li. This is an awesome piece of kit, and it costs around four or $5,000. It's a bit smaller than a person, and it's pretty easily operated from a garden as long as your sky is dark enough. This thing can take amazing photos for a personal scope, such as the one you're seeing right now of the Horsehead Nebula. I'm so impressed with how clear these images are, especially since they were taken with a relatively small telescope that you can just buy off the shelf. If you have a few thousand dollars and a bit of time to spend on this, then anyone can take images of the universe that look this beautiful. And I love that about space. Now let's go all the way up to a $5 million telescope called Superbit. This is a telescope with a mirror that's half a meter in diameter, way bigger than anything we've seen so far. The crazy thing about this one though, is that to take better photos, it's strapped to a balloon the size of an American football field and sent into the stratosphere. The atmosphere bends and disrupts light paths coming to us from distant objects, and that makes images fuzzy, so getting above as much of that as we can helps give us clearer images. The resolution that Superbit can achieve is similar to the Hubble Space Telescope, which we'll come back to in a second, don't you worry. Its images are absolutely gorgeous, although for $5 million, you'd kind of hope so. The jumps in price are getting really crazy now. Our next telescope is called the Grand Telescopio Canarius, and it initially cost about $140 million to set up. It costs even more if you take into account the running costs for this thing too. That point is actually even more true for the space telescopes that we'll look at in a second. But for this video, we'll just consider the initial setup and building costs. The reason this thing costs $140 million is that it is enormous. 
Its mirror is 10.4 meters in diameter. That is absolutely huge and lets it take incredible images of deep space objects. For telescopes, the basic rule is that the bigger the mirror, the better the images it takes. But it's really hard to build mirrors as big and as smooth as this one. Hence the huge cost. It's basically impossible to even build a single mirror this large. They tend to bend or break under their own weight. So the bigger telescopes like this one build perfect smaller mirrors and then they slot them together to form one bigger mirror like this one does. The images we're showing here are all taken by this enormous ground-based telescope. But it's finally time to start going to space. Next, we now have one of the most famous telescopes in history, the Hubble Space Telescope, which in total cost about $2 billion to build and launch. As you can see, it's pretty big compared to me. And that's why it was so expensive to get it into space. We can't use a balloon for this thing, it's just too big. And instead, we had to use NASA's incredible space shuttle. It also cost a lot more to send astronauts up to fix it when it didn't work that well at the beginning, and to run it for the last 30 years. But as I said, we're sticking to building and launching costs for this video. To avoid the disruptive atmosphere, we've now gone all the way to space, and Hubble orbits the Earth at about 535 kilometers above the surface of the planet. It takes amazing images with its 2.4 meter mirror, and some of these images of deep space are incredibly beautiful and famous. In particular, look at this one called the Tarantula Nebula. It's basically just a big cloud of space dust and gas, but it is absolutely stunning. Compare this image from the $2 billion Hubble mission to the same object seen from the $5 million Superbit Balloon Telescope. Do you think it was worth 400 times more? I mean, I sure do, but it wasn't my money, so that's easy to say. Other famous Hubble images include the Pillars of Creation, another beautiful space cloud, and the ultra deep field here, where every single source of light here is a galaxy containing billions of stars. Just remember all these images for a second while we look at our next telescope. Finally, this is JWST, an enormous and frankly ridiculous telescope that cost about $10 billion. Its primary mirror is made up of 18 hexagonal segments, each coated in gold and beryllium, and it's an enormous 6.5 meters in diameter. It's so big that it didn't fit in the rocket to go to space, so we had to fold it up to launch it. It was unbelievably complicated to unfold it in space, but thanks to the hard work of everyone involved, it actually worked perfectly. Also, if you thought Hubble was far away at 500 kilometers above Earth, JWST is even further away, at around 1.5 million kilometers, orbiting a point in space we call L2. All this effort and money was totally worth it though, in my opinion at least. Just look at some of the awesome images it has taken. It's done planets, galaxies, nebulae, comet collisions, and more. But let's see what an extra $8 billion and being 30 years newer gets you in comparison to Hubble. This is the upgrade to the Pillars of Creation image. Now, these two are taken at slightly different wavelengths of light, so we're not really comparing apples with apples. But I personally think the JWST one is absolutely crazily beautiful. The Tarantula Nebula that we saw before too, yeah, that's had a massive upgrade as well. And I think the JWST one with its colors and textures just blows this other one right out the water. The same is true for the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. We can now see even more galaxies at even better resolution with JWST. In the future, even bigger and more expensive telescopes will be built on the ground, like the future 30 meter telescope. And in space, we'll see something like this awesome Louvre design. Obviously, we don't have images from any of those yet because they don't exist yet, but I expect them to cost billions, even more than JWST for some of them. Tell me your favorite telescope or image from this list in the comments below. And feel free to check out another video on the channel for more spacey goodness. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye! You might think that this video has been made using a green screen to drop me into these amazing images and locations, but it's actually so much cooler than that. This video was made in collaboration with CCI XR at the University of Portsmouth in England. I've come to their incredible smart stage, which allows us to create some amazing immersive and interactive 3D environment giving these space images and telescopes the treatment they deserve. Thank you so much to the team here for their incredible hard work on this video, and hopefully we'll be back here again soon to talk more about the incredible universe we live in.
If you enjoyed the video, then please show your appreciation to the University of Portsmouth in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next video.